Okay, new video. Today we're doing Nicodem from Malifaux. Starting off with Golden Skin at 09092. And Nicodem is the official undertaker of Malifaux and a resurrectionist, which is blanket word for a group of necromancers. In other words, what the heck? Hmm. That was a little odd. The nozzle came off the cap. Don't need a whole lot. So, Nicodem sees himself as a gentleman in his behavior. And was plotting a mass overthrow of the city of Malifaux, bringing the governor down. We'll see how his plans have changed since the previous governor went up like a nuke. And how the new governor of Malifaux responds. So, not a whole lot of skin showing, just the face and hands. And unlike a lot of the rough and rugged types in Malifaux, he spends most of the time in the city itself, doing his job as the official undertaker, tending to graveyards, and slowly building his army of the undead. He's very much a manipulator. And his abilities in-game focus more on summoning and bolstering undead as opposed to direct damage. Okay. Go ahead and do the zombie skin next with moldy skin 09149. And since this model does feature a zombie coming out of the ground being summoned by Nicodem, it seemed in inappropriate to sculpt a base. So I'm just going to flock this when I'm finished. After all, it'll be a little odd to have a zombie rising out of a concrete floor. And it also makes perfect sense for Nicodeme to be standing on a perfectly manicured grass lawn, since that's what most cemeteries tend to have. It's good. And next, we're going to do Nicodeme's artificial leg. Where is it? There it is. With that uh, uh, one I can't read. 09197 Old Bronze or Old Brass, something like that. Let's see, super faded label. <laughs> and Nicodemus' left leg is mechanical. Malifo is yet another steampunk game I play. Can I say I just like the genre? Get a nice solid coating of brass. And 
go ahead and do this part of the cane. As well as the skulls on it. And there's a bit of steel on there, so 09206 tarnished steel. Don't need much. And carefully just go over and avoid the brass I just painted. go ahead and do the handle of his revolver. So what's a little odd about that is in game rules he actually doesn't have a gun. So this is mostly for show. This happened between first and second edition Malifaux when they changed up abilities and balanced things out. Some models that had guns lost them. Not sure if that's the barrel of the gun sticking out the bottom of the holster. I'm not going to worry about it right this minute. Using shield brown 09161. We're going to paint those that earth around the zombie. It's running out, but that should be enough to do what I need to do. And very carefully going around the waist. Getting all these rocks and loose earth that's actually part of the model. Okay. Go ahead and work on a secondary color 09023 Imperial Purple. Fun fact, purple is seen as a color of royalty, and Nicodem definitely sees himself as up-and-coming royalty. Can I get this on his pants? Those straps securing his artificial leg are going to be a different color. And this secondary cuff on his overcoat. And his bow tie. He's almost comically large. And his hat being careful with the bottom of the brim so I don't hit the skin tone I did earlier.
bit more on the tie. And while Silver's still wet, go ahead and get his glasses. and do the coat. We're going to use, let's see, where is it? Brilliant Blue. 09116. I want to do this fairly dark, but I don't like using straight black as it can be very difficult to shade and highlight. Though that would be another color that would be very appropriate. Another one's about empty. It doesn't even take a while, so I'll do the leather instead and put that ink down to the bottom of its nozzle there. Alright, so we'll move on to the leather then. 09110 oiled leather. I'm gonna do that on the zombie's hair. And on these straps securing Nicodemus' artificial leg to his body. And on his right boot. on the belt, leading to its holster. Check that blue again, see if it's going to cooperate. There we go.
I know there are actually a few bullets on the back of this holster. Hold on the belt and go ahead and just take that brass and really quickly. Just do that. Back to the blue. being very careful to make sure I don't miss anything but also to make sure I don't overextend get it where I don't want it. It's a little difficult going this dark on black primer but since Malifo is a dark game in theme with a dark sense of humor we generally don't want I generally don't want bright colors not on this to contrast that another game relic knights which is anime inspired generally has a very bright color palette and while the first Relic Knight models I've got are all primed with black, moving forward when I get the Kickstarter I backed, I will be priming with white and I'll show you exactly what the difference can be. Careful not to hit the bow tie or the flash tone. But also, I'm sure I'm getting a nice solid base coat on the coat. And that's got that. And the one color left. I'm going to clean my brush out nice and thoroughly. It's going to be a deep red. It's going to be deep red 09002. Don't need a lot of it because this is just going on a few places. Starting with these puffy sleeves. And yeah, puffy sleeves like this were actually considered fashionable at one point. <laughs> but, and again, Malifaux is based off an alternate Earth where magic exists and takes place, uh, if I remember right, fiction is about 1910, something around there. So it's about the right era.
post uh, California Gold Rush and about uh, World War One. Though in the case of Malifaux, their version of World War One is shaping up much differently than the one that happened in the real world. We get that on the sleeves and his ascot is. Yeah, frilly thing coming out of his neck. Making sure I didn't miss anything. Do need to touch up the back of the head a little bit. Make sure that's nice and dry because I don't want the flesh tones flooding on the hat and the uh, coat. Oh, uh, and since his hat band has a pattern on it, we'll go ahead and do that in the red. So real carefully. And you'll notice this hat band looks like a crown. And as I stated earlier, Nicodemus sees himself as an up and coming king in the kingdom of the undead. Got it. And that's it for base coats. Now this needs to dry completely, and then moving on to shading. Base coats are dry, now on to shading. Starting with that red. Go. Red brick. 09001. Just a little bit, because there's not a whole lot of this on there. And then the leather. Ruddy leather, 09109. Another one's about out. There we go, that should be enough. And shading's going high area to low area. Get that on the boot.
and get the zombie's hair. Okay. And while that dries, let's let that dry. All right, next layer of shading. Gonna do purple with 09022 Nightshade Purple. The steel. Zero nine two zero five black and steel. Don't need much of that. Be an extra careful on the glasses. And then the zombies flesh ghoul skin zero nine one four eight.
and the bronze using H pewter. Zero nine one nine six. I think that's one of the <laughs> faded labels. Just a little bit, because there's only a little bit here. This one. Carefully look at bullets on the back of the belt we did earlier. And the leg. And somehow I got some of the ghoul skin on these boot, I'm not sure how. Huh. Just really dilute it with water and dab it off four tries. Okay, now I've got to wait for that to dry completely and move on to the next. I'm going to finish the shading. go ahead and start with the rocks now the zombie wood stain brown 09160 that is way too much Coat with zero nine one one five Ritter look blue.
You've got to be really careful not to hit the areas we've already shaded. Well, going high to low helps. It doesn't always automatically eliminate the problem of accidentally hitting something you don't want to hit. So just patience and don't, yeah, that's mostly just patience. <laughs> And this might be a bit of a risk, but we're going to try to shade the skin to Golden Shadow 09091. There's plenty. This might work out okay. Be careful on the hand. Most careful of all around the head, especially since the blue is still wet. And that worked out. All right. Now, let's go ahead and take care of the base with leaf green. Number is zero nine zero one. One is also empty. Now we're going to say I got to wait a bit before I can get more paint, but. There we go. And before I forget something I was going to do, I'm going to take pure white 09039, tiny drop, and Nicodemus wearing his glasses with his zombie. White dots in the eyes and in the mouth. I do here in a bit. Very careful around the cane, so it's actually touching, or almost touching the rim. Again, really careful around the dirt that the zombie's coming out of. Go. Switching grip to the hat, which is a dry. Finishing up. It's like so. I'm going to put a glowing effect on the zombie's eyes and mouth with pale green 09012. But it's really plugged up. Don't know how they sometimes get that bad, honestly. 
tiny dot. It's more than enough. Make this into a wash. Really thin one to get the glowing effect like I want it. Real carefully in the eyes and the mouth. Okay. So that's the shading. Now we gotta let that dry and then we can highlight, knock out the rest of the details, and do the basic. All right, now that everything has had time to dry adequately, we're going to highlight. Starting with Golden Highlight 09093. There's a And we'll go ahead and do the dirt the zombies coming out of Driftwood Brown 09162. And before the internet starts speculating wildly, this is V8, not blood. And coat next. There we go. Cyan blue zero nine one one seven. Yeah, clogged nozzle and it's almost empty. Should do it. And I'm not going to bother with the underneath of the coat, just the top surface here. Let's get up pretty good. Clean up that brush much more thoroughly. Uh, 
I suppose the violet next. 09024 amethyst purple. And zero nine zero two three, I think. <laughs> Faded label again. This is blood red. And there was some water in there. It's not good. Try that again. Do the steel next. Zero nine two zero seven true silver. Don't need a whole lot of that. The glass is just going to take a tiny bit. Just like that. Kind of dotting it on the lenses. Revolver. And the cane. I was originally going to do this cane in straight silver, but decided it looked better with two colors on it. That'll do. So zero nine one nine eight tarnished brass. That should be more than enough. Making sure this brush is super dry. Let's go ahead and start on the cane, just carefully brushing the skull orientation at the top. And it's low. Look at going on his fake leg. It's a little bit of water in that zombie's palm. I don't know how it got there.
really want that knee cut burnished. That's good. And I just realized I forgot to do his bow tie. Let's take care of that real quick. That's got it. And now I just realized I forgot to do the bullets at the back of his ammo belt. Again, what's weird about him having a gun is he doesn't actually use it in game. This is mostly for appearances. So, burnt orange 09111, that's going to be the highlight for the leather and the zombie's hair. And this is another one that's just about out, so we'll let that sit upside down for a minute and do the zombie's highlight. Bloodless skin 09150. Still need to be more conscious of the camera. Still not, even after a month, used to doing this for an audience. And we'll go ahead and put a bit of this on the hair. In fact, that actually works better than the highlight for the leather, because Leather's buff and shiny. This guy's been underground for a while. And another example where mixing up your highlight and shading can give you interesting effects you didn't plan on. Sometimes experiments don't work out, but I'd say at least nine times out of ten it's worthwhile. This one might be completely going. Wow. Okay, plan B. Pop the top. And just take directly from the pot like this. I would not normally recommend doing this. I can't really do it with a shader. But, uh, look what you got sometimes. Some of the belt, straps holding his fake leg on, the holster. And the boot. Got it. Okay. So that's actually done with highlighting. All the details are already done that we're going to do. And the basing from that old grungy Gatorade cap. The Elmer's glue wall. Drop of water. Get that mixed up. Grab the floor and get that ready to roll. Juice. That's a project that I'm not doing a video on. Should get the brush nice and wet. Mix that up really good. It looks a bit like gray milk, I guess. 
gray hair. Carefully paint this solution in and around the feet. What's nice about these bases that have this lip is they will catch it. Carefully tapping out the excess, and then taking a different brush than only used, just brushing it away from areas you don't want. So getting the toes kind of cleared up, and the foot. And that's pretty good. Let's clear them both out just to be safe. And then Woodland Scenic Scenic Cement. Does recommend it's shake, I don't know why it to work either way. Using an eyedropper, and it is a little more difficult when it's mostly empty like this one is. Though it's still good for at least half a dozen other models before I have to buy a new one. I'm just carefully dropping that in around the basing. You want to absorb, you don't want it dripping on. Otherwise, you're going to get empty spots. And once it looks fairly saturated, that's it. Just clean out the eyedropper thoroughly by squirting into water and squirting out a few times. This stuff will eventually clog if you don't clean it up. And I use glass eyedroppers, which are actually a bit hard to find. Maybe it's just my area. Those plastic clogs quicker. I'm guessing the cement just adheres that better. And I'm done. Nicodem the Undertaker. And we're going to continue on in the next few videos with the rest of this box set.